What's up, everyone? Welcome to the January 20th edition of FanDuel Tournament Plays presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can find me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And as a reminder, you get one free month of Awesomeo Plus Platinum when you sign up and make a deposit at Prize Picks. Be sure to use the code Awesomeo to receive a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. We have a three game NBA slate today, a lot of pending news, especially for a three gamer, but we have Devontae Graham questionable in the Pelicans game. That could obviously have impacts. Uh, we have the Mavericks released their injury report. The only person on it is Sterling Brown. So for now, doesn't seem like we have injury news there, but they are on a back-to-back, -back, so we could get some late announcements. And then the big one is in the late game, you have the Indiana Pacers with Malcolm Brogdon and Jeremy Lamb both on the second half of a back-to-back -back after making their returns last night. The Manas Sabonis rolled his ankle towards the end of last night's game. Rick Carlisle didn't seem particularly optimistic about it after the game. We don't have any sort of injury report from the Pacers yet, so a lot of stuff's going to change. Uh, long story short, be sure to turn tune into the deeper dive from 5.30 Eastern until 6.30 Eastern, and then live before lock from 6.30 to 7.30 for more up-to-date information and more strategy on how to handle potentially having the late swap around some of this news. But for now, we're going to take a look at five of the top tournament options on FanDuel. Starting at number five, Jackson Hayes is $4,200, projected for 5% ownership with a 9% chance of being in the optimal lineup. This is a clearly a, a lower probability play, but it can be difficult on FanDuel to differentiate sometimes because they, they tend to have a little bit softer pricing. It makes the popular players also be more likely to succeed. And so it's a little bit more difficult to get away from some of them, uh, just kind of forces ownership in, in certain directions. Hayes is an interesting one because he's power forward eligible, so you don't have to use a center spot. He's been backing up Jonas Valanciunas, and Hayes isn't a bad per minute producer. So basically, Hayes is likely to play 15, 16 minutes and give you a mediocre score for $4,200. But if Valanciunas were to get in foul trouble or the game gets out of hand or the, the Pelican second unit plays well and Hayes just gets extra minutes for one reason or another, he could certainly be a difference maker for you in tournaments. Number four, O'Shea Brissett, $3,700, currently projected for 11% ownership with an 18% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Brissett is a player I really like in tournaments tonight because his range of outcomes in terms of being, quote unquote, a, a in terms of quality of tournament play, like if you're talking, you know, is he a bad play, a good play, whatever, his range of outcomes kind of just goes from like being decent to being really, really good, depending on what Indiana, what news we get from Indiana, what their starting lineup is, what his ownership really ends up at. But Brissett has a role one way or the other with Miles Turner out. And at 3,700, if you get 20 to 22 minutes from O'Shea Brissett, he's relatively likely to pay off his salary anyway but there's the chance that we get Sabonis ruled out that we get Jeremy Lamb ruled out that we get both ruled out in which case Brissett would be likely to play even more minutes especially against a small Golden State team when Indiana doesn't really have any bigs outside of Goga Batadze and Isaiah Jackson who they don't use very frequently so you could certainly see a situation where going into the slate at 7 30 we're still waiting on Pacers news and Brissett looks like a pretty good option but then news breaks after lock when it's, you know, some people are, are not around to late swap and uh, they won't drive his ownership up as much where he becomes a much, much better play at still relatively low ownership. Number three, Devin Booker, $9,000 on FanDuel, projected for 34% ownership, but with a 41% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Booker's likely to see a little bit of a usage bump without DeAndre Ayton, but he's also likely to give you 34 to 36 minutes. So in addition to slightly increased production, you're just getting a lot of playing time from one of the highest upside scorers uh, in the mid-range. Number two, Christoph Porzingis, $8,500, projected for 33% ownership with a 46% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He has he has power forward and center eligibility, which normally doesn't seem that important because there's so much opportunity cost at the center position, you're typically not going to look to roster a power forward eligible player there. But tonight, with the teams playing, there actually isn't that much opportunity cost at all at center. So being able to roster Porzingis there actually does make him a lot more valuable. We haven't seen any news on him regarding his status on the back-to-back. -back. He's not on the injury report for now. I'm assuming he plays, and I'm assuming he gives you thir his normal 30 to 32 minutes. And coming in number one, the top tournament option on the slate, Stephen Curry, $10,300 projected for 38% ownership with a 47% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Curry is basically competing with Luka Doncic for 
top overall scorer on tonight's slate. Um, Doncic, I think, looks a little bit better, but Curry not getting quite quite as much ownership. He's reasonably priced at 10300 We know the scoring system on FanDuel isn't quite as favorable for him since you don't get bonus points for three-pointers. There is plenty of blowout risk in tonight's game, but everyone's aware of that, and that helps drive down the ownership a little bit when realistically there's still a pretty good chance uh, – probably as good as anybody outside of Luca on the slate, that Curry is going to be the highest scoring player tonight. So still a pretty appealing spot to take chances on a three-game slate in tournaments. So to recap, number five, Jackson Hayes. Number four, O'Shea Brissett. Number three, Devin Booker. Number two, Christoph Porzingis. And number one, Stephen Curry.